Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com, and welcome to the third chapter of the Intro to Joomla series. So this is Administrator Essentials. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about some of the basics of the Joomla admin dashboard, specifically the global configuration. So to get started here, go to localhost slash administrator or wherever you install Joomla at. Log in using your super user account. So mine, I changed mine from admin to Kevin. So Kevin, my password, I log in. So here is the home dashboard. The first time we log in here, it's gonna ask us if we want to send statistics to Joomla. Sure, why not? They're supposed to be anonymous, but if you don't wanna send them for whatever reason, you can always hit no there. The admin dashboard contains several admin modules. A lot of these are just links to other areas of the backend. Some important things here, we have our user manager, our article manager, our media manager. Over here on the right, we have the global configuration. Down here, we have some important notifications. So Joomla is up to date and all my extensions are up to date. Every time we visit this page, it's gonna run a quick check to see if everything's up to date. If it's not, this is gonna be, I believe, either yellow or red to let you know that there's something that needs to be updated. The sample data is pre-installed data that we could just load onto the website for testing purposes. So I don't really want that there. So I'm just going to unpublish that module by clicking those little gears because I don't wanna accidentally install a bunch of sample data onto my website that will actually confuse us more in some cases. We have the latest actions. So Joomla keeps a log of what everyone does. You can see that I logged in as admin, current logged in users, me, recently added articles, popular articles, privacy dashboard. So we'll talk about what all those do later. And we could dismiss that module and publish message. So over here to the left, we have our admin menu where we can get to all the different areas of the backend. Up here at the top, we have some status notifications, a link to the front end, and these are post install messages. So if we click that, we can just hide those messages. They don't seem to send out many post install messages anyway, so I just close those. Without further ado, let's get started talking about the global configuration. So the global configuration is where all the website's most important settings are saved. Very first one, the site name. So in the last chapter, I named the site my first Joomla website, I believe. I'm going to rename this to something more appropriate. So for the purposes of this series, I think I'm going to call it Kevin's blog. So this will just be my blog, like a personal blog site. Now there are tons of different options in the global config. You can see there's a bunch of different tabs with different settings. We're not going to talk about every single one of them, but I do want to go over some of the more important ones. And additionally, over here on the left, you can see we have individual settings for each component. So for example, I have my articles. If I click this, I'm going to get all the options for the articles component, the banners component, the menus component, and so on. And we're going to go into more detail on some of the options under those menu items later. But for now, let's focus on the global configuration part of the settings. So we have our site name, Kevin's blog. If I save that and I check here, now it says Kevin's blog. And I don't have the site name displayed anywhere on the home page, but anything that references the site name would now say Kevin's blog. Site offline. So this is something you might want to turn on every now and then. It just takes your whole site offline. And then when we refresh the home page, we get a message saying that the site's down for maintenance. Come back soon. If a user has an account and they're allowed to log in, they can log in and see the website as we're making important changes or whatever. So if I wanted to log in using my super user account, I could. And now I can see the front end, but regular people cannot. So I log back out there. 
put my save back online. Now it's back to normal. So that's what that option does. The front end editing option allows you to change modules and menu items on the front end of the website by clicking little icons that appear in the corner. So let me log in again. That's these options here. We're going to talk more specifically about editing menus and modules later. I don't like the front end module editing option, so I'm going to actually set that to none. And we're going to learn how to edit modules and menus from the back end. I believe it makes more sense to do it that way. The default editor, so that's the what you see is what you get editor, is Tiny MCE. That's the one that comes pre-installed with Joomla. There are third-party editors we can download and install, and then they would show up here. CodeMirror is just a strict HTML editor, so if you know HTML, you might want to check out CodeMirror. And the editor none option will show us just a text box in place of the editor. CAPTCHA, that has to do with spam prevention. We're not going to talk about that now. All right, so the default access level, that is the default access level for all the items that we create on the website. And public is a good place to start there, unless for some reason you need to change it to like registered or something. Like you want all your articles by default to only be viewable to registered users. That might be useful if you have like an internal corporate website or something like that. The list limit is the amount of items that show up in a list. So there's a lot of different places in Joomla where we have lists of items and having 20 of them is kind of a, a decent number. If you list too many items at once, you're going to be overusing the server. It's going to take more server resources. It's going to have to make more calls to the database. And if I'm displaying 500 items on a page, that's of course going to take up more resources than just displaying 20 items on a page. Feed limit, we'll talk about feeds later. Ignore that, ignore that. The site meta description. So this ties into search engine optimization and what search engines read. So if I set the site meta description, it just needs to be something short about my website. So I could say like a personal portfolio on Kevin. That's my meta description. It's not very good, but it'll do for now. Robots. This has to do with what search engines are allowed to record about your website. So if we say index follow, search engines like Google are going to be allowed to index our websites and they will appear in search results. Follow means that the search engine follows the links on your page to other pages on your website or elsewhere and also tries to index those pages if it can. So index follow is what you want to set if you intend on making your website public and you want to draw in users from search engines. If you want it to be hidden on search engines, you would want to set robots to no index, no follow. Content rights, that can just be like a license. Like if I want to license my stuff under MIT, it's just going to put this tag in the description of my web pages. Users aren't going to see it on the front end unless they look at your page source, but that is if you want to have that tag there. Author meta tag, same thing. Metadata is always hidden. And if we want the author to be listed on each page as a readable attribute by other software platforms, we could set that to show. Joomla version, we don't need to show our Joomla version. We'll just leave that as is. Search engine optimization, SEO. So this ties in with metadata. We're going to talk more about SEO and metadata in actually the last chapter of the series. But for now, we can ignore these settings. The only one I want to mention is the site name and page title. If I set that to after or before, it's going to display my page name in the tab name up here. So now it's home Kevin's blog. So whatever page I am, dash my site name. So whether you want that on or off is up to you. Cookie domain and path, leave that alone. System tab, this has some important system settings like how caching works, how sessions are handled. We don't need to get into that now. 
debugs more if you're experiencing issues and a developer asks you to turn that on, then maybe you'll have to turn that on. But unless you're a developer, you probably won't need to use the debug tools that much. The server tab has some more performance settings, some security settings. The one thing you might want to change here is the website time zone. So since I'm in New York time, I might want to set mine to New York. So instead of using standard time, I'm using New York time for all my articles or for my website. Everything that gets posted will now show as New York time instead of standard. Web services, cores, ignore that for now. Proxy, ignore that. That's more performance type stuff. The database section down here, this is all the database settings that we set in the previous chapter when we installed Joomla. You shouldn't really need to change this unless you are for some reason changing where your server is hosted. So if your MySQL server changes for some reason, then yeah, you might want to change something here, but normally you won't have to touch this. The mail, this regards emails. My website is not connected to the internet. It's not live. I'm just going to turn email off for now. Logging. So everything gets logged in Joomla. We don't need to log almost everything. We just need to log like important user actions. Leave the logging settings as they are. Leave the custom logging settings as they are. Text filters have to do with what user groups are allowed to enter certain use tags into HTML and just leave those as default for now. Finally, the permissions tab, we're gonna get into users and permissions later in the series, but this basically says which users are allowed to do what globally. So let me save that. And that is the global configuration. So we've gone over the home dashboard, the menu, some of the important global configuration settings. Now, if you check out my website at kevinsguides.com, I do have a detailed description of what each of these options does. Now, there's a lot of them. And like I said, we're gonna go into more detail about what each one does later. Also, Joomla has a built-in help option I forgot to mention on a lot of their options pages. So if I click this help button, it's gonna load the official Joomla docs. Some of these haven't been updated from Joomla 3, but most of them have. They're not as detailed as maybe they should be sometimes. But if you need help, there are also descriptions under that help option in English. I don't know if they have any other languages out yet. So we went over all of that. Now let's take a look. Was there anything else I wanted to mention here? Oh, uh, yes. So the four key types of extensions, there are, there are more than this, but the four main ones are the template. So we mentioned that in the last chapter, or the first chapter, I believe. The template is the overall look and feel of the website. So like kevinsguides.com, I made this purplish template that's going on. It gives the site its layout. So it says like this table of contents thing goes over here. This goes over here. This goes over here. That's all related to the template positions. The you are here breadcrumbs module. That is the thing at the top of the website that says where you're at. So on Kevin's guides, that's up here. Then we have the menu module that displays the menu. Login module, that's the login form. So modules are basically little like snippets of code that run on distinct areas of your website. And we can change in the settings where different modules appear. So if you have like an advertisement, you might put that in a module and stick that somewhere. Say, show my advertisement here on these pages. So modules do that. The component area is the central, like biggest part of the web page normally. And components tend to be more complex pieces of software with lots of functionality. But right now, we are looking at an article on my website. And that article is part of the article's component. If I go to log in and I look at the login form or the user registration form, that's part of the user's component. So there's all these different components. They all have different settings but they're big pieces of software that serve a core purpose on our website. 
The last type of extension that you need to worry about is plugins. And there's like several hundred plugins that are included with Joomla by default. And they kind of run in the background doing various things, performance, they, they do all sorts of different things, how content appears, lots of stuff. And we'll talk more about plugins later, but they kind of work in the background, just making things magically work, we'll say. So those are the four main types of extensions. We've got our templates, our components, our modules, and our plugins. So that concludes this chapter. In the next chapter, we're going to learn a little bit about editing articles. Thanks for watching.